Tell us about the Gemini diesel. We're really excited to bring this to the marketplace. We think that there's a great need for an LSA in this uh, form factor and size and power to weight ratio. So we're excited to bring it to market and uh, it's great to debut it right here at Sun and Fun. LSA has not been the best market in the world, but it is fairly unrestricted. You've got ASTM standards to work by. It's actually a good place to introduce products. But do you see you're having the ability at this point to make much of an inroad into a market that's been kind of soft? Well, what we see is segments of the world that need flexible power more so than just 100 low lead or pump gas, mo gas, as the case may be. Fuel quality and availability in parts of the world can be really questionable. So this motor would give them the, the consistency in fuel to develop the kind of power they need. LSA is a small segment of aviation, but it's a growing segment, so we'd like to service it. Now, as I understand it though, you're heading for certification shortly thereafter. How will the progression of the introduction of this engine go? We'll start with the 100 and the 125 since they're uh, fairly developed. Uh, and then beyond that, it just depends on what the airframers of today would like to develop next. We've had quite a lot of interest in the 300 horsepower range. And if that continues and airframers are willing to make some commitments, that's probably our next point of departure. What I think that'll look like is a 300 horsepower that burns about 20 to 25 percent less fuel than what we currently have. And then you have the flexibility of anywhere in the world. If you think about it in countries like Brazil or Africa, fuel quality, it's an issue. And so this really opens up some opportunities there. Well, under any circumstances, a reasonably light, reasonably inexpensive, and reasonably fuel thrifty engine certainly is going to get our attention. But one of the things that works here is, well, it's superior. But it's still got to be a huge project to take on something that's a little bit out of your wheelhouse, going strict diesel. And of course, we know this is an engine that's been in development for a long period of time. There's been a lot of work done on it and a lot of money spent on it. Why is Superior going to succeed where everybody else has failed? Well, the previous developer of this particular engine didn't necessarily fail. They ran out of funding. These projects are ridiculously large in terms of their appetite for funding. The economic climate today is much better. We're using our full breath to develop this as part of our full offering. So we're not going to just be a diesel company, we're going to continue to do what we do. You want to buy a whole engine, it's great. You want to buy PMA piece parts to overhaul your engine, fantastic. You need a diesel, we've got that. At such time when the diesel needs overhauling, we'll have overhaul parts and, and PMA for it as well. So our whole line is a continuous expansion. Well, on the base Gemini diesel, the 100 horsepower, the two big questions that everybody asks right off the bat. How much and when can I have one? The target price is $24.9, which uh, is, uh, we think, a really fair price for the particular engine in the market space. And then availability, we've got uh, five prototypes that'll be available to hang in the next 90 days. And then we expect to have production ready pieces in Q1 of 16. Same question from before, cost availability on the 125? The availability it'll probably be in the second quarter of 16, so it'll trail a little bit. It basically is a turbocharged flavor of the 100, which gives us a little more expandability there. Uh, as far as a cost price, I don't have a target cost on it just yet. It's a little premature uh, for me to go down that path. Now, during the press conference, there are obviously some questions about OEM interests and where this might show up in the next airframes and so forth. Can you give, and I realize why you wouldn't be saying anything about that right now, but can you give me an indication of what it is that's attracting these manufacturers? What are they trying to accomplish by going to something that is still yet an unknown from what has been known for so long? The diesel has been something that a lot of airframers really want to get involved in, and they really like to be part of the ground floor piece of it. And unfortunately, uh, they really haven't had the opportunity to do so. This is sort of a clean sheet diesel. It's totally different from, from what they've had in the past. Uh, some of the past implementations in the diesel arena have been converted automobile motors, which were heavy, bulky, hard to cow. This particular engine is really compact. It's going to be much easier to cow. And we got some excitement around that. I mean, it is about the same form factor as a Rotax, more or less. So you can really have a nice, tight fit cow, even though it's water cooled and going to have a radiator, you can plumb it and make it look really sharp and aerodynamic. So we're just getting a tremendous amount of uh, buzz around that and interest. What kind of feedback are you getting with your initial discussions with FAA in regards to the certification path? Very positive. The FAA realizes that, you know, we need to grow down this space. It's not easy space, but so far it's been really positive. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Jim.
Aero TV is brought to you by Explore no limits flying in the newly FAA certified Sea Ray Elite Amphibious LSA. Progressive Aerodyne Sea Ray Elite with a Rotax 914 turbocharged engine is equally at home on the ground, in the air, or on the water. Check it out at www.searay.com. Now certified Aspen Avionics single band ADSB ATX100 and ATX100G transceivers are the next gen ADSB solution that provides the features pilots need while keeping flyaway costs low. Check it out now at AspenAvionics.com.